Hey, Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Wanted to take a few minutes and bring you up to speed with MeasureQuick 2.0. So we're going to go ahead and open up MeasureQuick here. And every time MeasureQuick opens, it does look for updates. And if you see an update, you will want to accept that. It'll go through a updating process. You just hit dismiss and then close and restart the application. And you should, when you load up, load up to this new user interface for uh, the 2.0. We have done a ton of work on the application to take advantage of an iPad and to make the application much more flexible uh, for the user. So you're gonna see our default settings here, and these are what are called cards or widgets. So these are just like small programs that we can sort of move around to make the user interface customizable for what you wanna do. So I'm gonna go through each one of the cards and explain what the cards are, and then I'll show you how to customize them when we're all done here. But the What's New card is just a sort of announcement of what we're doing for 2.0. And there is a link there for info at measurequick.com. If you want to tap on that link to give us any information back, you can just make an email and send it to us, and uh, that will uh, get it over to us. At the top here, you'll see a MeasureQuick HVAC. If you just tap that, you'll go right back to the application. Uh, MeasureQuick Classic. If for some reason you're in a utility program or you don't want to uh, use the new version of it, you can tap anywhere on this home screen display and it'll take you right into MeasureQuick Classic. So we'll just go there for just a second. You can see now the gauges, everything's starting to hook up and go. We'll hit back. If you want to hide that card, you can just hit hide uh, at the bottom. We have our dispatch tests, which are uh, dispatched through Service Titan or dispatched through MeasureQuick Virtuoso or MeasureQuick Cloud. So it'll allow you to see any tests you've been dispatched to. When you arrive at a job site, um, you can just hit the refresh button here and that will bring up a map showing you jobs that are in the local area versus where you're standing. So that blue dot down here at the bottom, this is where it thinks I'm standing at. It's because I'm on building Wi-Fi, so it'll jump around a little bit. And then you'll see pins of equipment that I've serviced before. And you can actually tap on these pins now and start a job from the equipment map. So it'll pull up the identifier for the unit, the model number of the unit, serial number, you'd verify it's the right unit you're working on. Then you can literally start the test uh, right from that point. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Test tracker is the virtuoso data streaming. So anybody in your company that's streaming data, uh, you can just hit the refresh button. It'll search for live streams. And you can see anybody within your company that's streaming data. Um, so now no need to go to the cloud to do that. Tasks is uh, basically a, you know, it's four different buttons, but it allows us to do things like start testing, uh, perform a quick test, view our save test, uh, view our toolbox. So when you hit start testing, it's going to pull up the, uh, the types of tests we want to do. Heating or cooling uh, tests, dispatch tests, whatever we have there. And if we go back and we want to look at like quick tests, That'll pull up the quick test. So, you know, we can open the evacuation app or the blue vac app, do a temperature compensated pressure test, duct leakage screening, multiple superheat mode. So these are like right at your fingertips right now if you want to use those. We also have our save tests, which are tests that are saved in your device, or you can even you know, view your toolbox and see the tools that are connected to measure quick um, and work with those. Virtuoso, virtuoso, virtuoso portal, sorry, it was tough to get that one out. Uh, is actually a measure quick virtuoso. So if you want to log on to the cloud, and uh, you can do that right now from the app. Again, access to the test tracker, access to your company information, uh, and a direct link to buy qubits if you need qubits for testing. Quick test is, again, another just a panel here, and you go, well, why are some of these duplicated? And I'll show you in just a minute. Because now this is like one level higher if you think about this quick test. So here you got to you know, tap on quick test. But if you want this right at your fingertips, even a level higher, you can have it on the screen right here. Links to our latest videos on Measure Quick, So you can see um, what any videos that you want to watch on how to use a new interface or how to use a product. Links to our Measure Quick training. Um, some advertising here so if you want to like it's a uh, click on a, any of our ads it'll take you right out to our uh, vendors that we work with so in this case here it'll take you out to the, the blue back kit and then we'll go back to measure quick hvac products that work with measure quick and again we always ask if you if you're going to purchase any products please buy them through the measure quick platform uh, we do get a small stipend for uh, uh, with vendors that we work with 
and so this is always very helpful for us. It's definitely not a primary revenue stream, but it does help pay the rent every month. And then you can obviously also do some cool things here, and this is where I want to show you. We got the bottom is customize the start screen. So if you want to hide things like Measure Quick Classic, let's say that you don't use that all the time, and uh, you've you've been through the what's new, you want to hide that temporarily. Maybe you want to move your uh, equipment map to the top and put your dispatch test underneath it. Uh, have the test tracker. Um, maybe the quick test. I'm okay with the with the tasks here, uh, but I want to. I don't need the quick test. And let's say that um, uh, I've already got all my Measure Quick products, so I want to hide those. You can actually save that start screen, and it will take all those arrangements, rearrangements you did, so you can actually move each one of these boxes or these widgets wherever you want to move it to. So now you can see I got my dispatch, my equipment map, my dispatch test, and literally you can go through this and say, oh, "Is this the way I want it?" Well, maybe not. Maybe I want to move my uh, uh, dispatch test to the top above my equipment map, and maybe these because I'm not going to use them, I'll just you know move them towards the bottom here, and we'll just move them down a little bit further. Maybe I'll just move this what's new all the way down to the bottom if I want to, right? When I save that start screen again, you'll see that now my dispatch tests are at the top, equipment map, test tracker, right? So it's really customizable the way that you want to use Measure Quick. So now I've got this set up. So when I land on my home screen, I can see my equipment map. So I'm going to go ahead, tap on a pin, and we'll go ahead and start a test here. And again, you'd verify the identifier, the make, model, and serial number of this unit, and I'll hit start test. And then it's going to pull me up to the test type. Now, test type is also adjustable. So let's say like right now it's at landing on the heating test, but I'm in the cooling season, so I want to edit that order. Again, I can edit the order of the app, move Measure Quick Heating to the top. I can have my projects assigned to me on there, or I can hide them um, because it is on the home screen, but I can also have it there. But as soon as I save that order again, now Measure Quick Cooling Tests are at the top. We have built in our installation workflow which this is for installing a retro commissioning equipment this is like the first time you come out you want to use this and then any subsequent service you'd use either an invasive test where you're hooking up gauges or a non-invasive test which is what we recommend uh, once you benchmark the system to test without gauges and this could also be used uh, regular for just regular service if you're not doing a service test so it looks like i tapped that so we're going to go into it for just a minute and you'll notice that right away um we are taking full advantage of an iPad screen. So split screen, probably my favorite feature on Measure Quick because it literally cut the navigation to the workflow in half. Because now you have this user interface on the side that you can uh, interact with. So you can see a lot of data very quickly. And then also we have our gauges, you know, right over there. And you can actually make this work the way you want to work. So let's say you're left-handed, right? I, I usually, I am left-handed, but I actually tend to work with it on my right. I can tap on the gear at the top and then I can decide, well, do I want this third or half screen? So I could say, well, I want it half screen and I want my gauges to be on the right hand side. So I turn off gauges on the left, hit the check mark, boom, it's right there. So now I can interact over here if I want to, or I can turn it back just as simple as it could be, turn it back to third, which is how I prefer to use it and gauges on the left. And there we go. So there's a lot of customization uh, on, again, how you want to use the application. You'll see that you've got, uh, in your settings, you've got your units of measure you can set up. You can show touch indicators. This is the, like this blue button I'm using right now. You can keep your screen awake all the time. You have your split screen view on or off if you don't want to use that for some reason. Um, you have some uh, error messages. I usually leave this on uh, because I'm uh, doing some debugging of our programming, you'll probably just turn this to off. So it's pretty simple to switch that on and off. You have a auto mapping and disable start connect button. Now, the first time you log on to Measure Quick, uh, if you're a brand new user, it's just gonna auto map your probes and it's gonna auto connect your probes. So you don't have to do anything uh, you know, to make this work right away. Now we've set that up so you can disable those. And we use that a lot of time when we're like working in a classroom where I have a bunch of people that want to map probes to. Um, or, and disable start connect is uh, it, for some reason, if you want to connect your own probes, like maybe you're using some demo data or things like that. Then we've got some advanced settings uh, where you can set your equipment search radius. So I usually have it set at a quarter mile. So it's just within a quarter mile where I'm at. I can see jobs. 
Uh, the only time I use UC level is if I'm doing software testing. I want to like look at some psychometrics and things and don't want to do air density changes. Uh, I can look, always set it up to show the vitals, keep the system vitals as default. I've got my advanced targets. If I want to use advanced targets, which are just sort of little tighter uh, target ranges, better quality images, and our experimental um, AI engine, which is basically uh, doing some things with the vital scoring. And then I've got my demo data there. So I've got this all set up the way I want it. I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark there. The check will always accept it, and X will exit it out. So you always want to make sure once you change your readings, you hit the check mark on there. So now you'll notice right away that I my probe's connected. I've, I've got a couple of things here that's telling me, number one, this system has been profiled. So that the profile, that green thumb mark, tells me that this system was, when it was profiled, it was operating properly. If it's yellow, it means it was it was benchmarked. Um, and I keep talking about benchmark and profiling, but profile here, let me just click it. The profile is the initial system profile. Like, how is this thing set up? So what year was it installed? We grab the uh, condenser make and model number on the service workflow. Is it a split system? What kind of, what kind of uh, compressor does it have? What tonnage is it? What refrigerant is it? What sear is the system? So all these different, uh, um, all this little bit information about how that system works. You'll see in this case, it's a benchmarked system because uh, we've already grabbed some information on this one. So we'll go ahead and hit, hit continue. Performance is just how that system's performing, right? What's its uh, capacity sensible? And you see also we broke this up into cards. So you've got your, um, your, your basic uh, performance of the system, your air side performance, your energy efficiency, if we put in electrical readings and some additional information. And any one of these, can, you, can go, you can tap on the gauges at the top. If you wanna go right to your gauges, you can tap on the benchmark. You know, any of these buttons is accessible at any time now. So there's no, again, back and forth in the application. When you benchmark a system, and let's just, let me just show you what this is doing, just so you understand uh, the benchmark and the profile. But I'm going to clear the benchmark for a minute. And so that's going to say, hey, this is like we started out when it was new. So these pressures could fall anywhere in this range, right? And obviously, we got our superheat and our subcooling there in range. But this benchmark, what it does, it sort of captures the personality. Because the line set length, the voltage, the airflow you selected, all that stuff's going to affect the system operation. So when you hit benchmark, and the system is benchmarked, you notice these targets up here tighten way up, right? And they tightened up because now we're comparing uh, the going forward the the operation of the system currently to that of the day it was benchmarked, right? So that benchmark's very handy. System status is just telling you um, how that system's operating. So this system is operating like a 13 to 17 SEER, optimized for a moist climate. Could be optimized for a dry climate. Uh, could be optimized for a tropical climate. Uh, you can see again we got our vital score here. So this vital scoring takes into account our age and efficiency of the system, any temperature split losses, which again, if you don't know what we're looking for, hit these information buttons here. When I tap on the information, it's going to tell you, hey, a split loss is tied to sensible capacity. So systems with a low temperature split may have a charge issue or more common return duct leakage issue that could result in excessive run times and substantial losses. So when you're looking at the scoring here, it's sort of telling you, um, you know, what part of the system is, might be having the problem. And we can literally tap a button and we can generate a scoring report on that vitals. At, and so we can see the system scoring 100%. It doesn't have any charge issues, subcooling or superheat issues. There's some check mark boxes here at the bottom on the subsystem review. And sorry, you can't see the touch indicators on this screen. This is just because I haven't checked off these, uh, you know, I haven't gone through a full process of checking everything. but. Overall here, you can see the, sc the system score is great. This shows you a breakdown of where your losses were at. Again, this is sort of like a consumer forward-facing report so they can see, you know, how that system is operating. And then just a little bit of information about what the vitals report is, why I look at charge, why I look at heat transfer, why I look at air distribution. So uh, very, very handy cons consumer forward-facing report. Diagnostics right at your fingertips again, so you don't have to tap on the flag to see any diagnostics. And then your workflow requirements right there. So if you want to you know, do your profile for your system when you start, you just click on the system profile, do your profiling. Geotag your equipment, now your map's here. So you just you know, drop the pin and drop it on the piece of equipment that you're working on. 
Job site information, you go into your job site, you can click customer information, enter in your customer information. Filter information, right? We added a button here, so if you installed new filters, you just click installed new filters, you see the date up here updated to 411, which is today, hit continue, and that'll go green. And we've got a really some really cool features here because um, as soon as I did a test here with a with a Generate Vitals report, I actually did a test, so I can either retest the system or I can clear the test in. And I'll go ahead and clear that for just a minute. So you can see now it's got like a test in test out type theme. And so as soon as I go in and hit retest the system, and we'll uh, I'm not going to enter electrical data in here. I'll do it by hand. So if I enter in electrical data, let's just say it's one two three. And we'll just do this as one, two, three, four, and then we'll hit continue. You'll see that I have all my measurements in. So I got my performance calculations. I have nothing on the diagnostics and I have nothing on the subsystem review. So when I save my data, what's going to happen is I'm going to hit preview report. And that's going to take me in where I can, again, have a chance to look at the subsystem review. And you can see I've got a red flag here. So I'm going to click on the edit button. Now, it's giving me a fail on voltage because I didn't take it, right? So for Measure Quick to give you a pass, you've got to actually measure the voltage on there because it's looking at not only the uh, utilization voltages, but it's looking at your power factor. And again, that's based off the age of your system. It's got different power factor tolerances now. I can mark that as undetermined. Air distribution system, my temp split was in the right range. My fan watt draw was good. My total external static pressure was okay. My air filter fil uh, filtration system, I got good filter face velocity. Uh, condensate drain, now this is when I have to say, is this a pass or a fail? So I can click on it and make it pass. Refrigerant charge, uh, superheat and subcooling are in good range. Outdoor equipment's new, so that's a pass. Indoor equipment's new, so that's a pass. And then it looks at my cooling system electrical efficiency um, and capacity. So you can see my capacity is 102%, perfect, right? So that's great. And then my cooling efficiency here is at 11.3 uh, SEER. So that's considered low efficiency, right? Because the lowest efficiency we can buy is a 13 SEER. So that's all set up and we'll hit continue. So now I got an opportunity to save test in, save test out, but I want to show you a couple other things. There's a hotkey down here at the bottom. Anytime I want to tap on that hotkey, I can do things like go into my toolbox. So if I want to go in and let's say turn on my electrical meters to make my electrical measurements. I can just click on the electrical meter, make the electrical measurement. I can also take a photo at any time. So if I want to tap and take a photo, I can pull it up, click on the thermostat, click on the electrical system, add a photo to the system, and you know, you're good to go. So you can literally just hit add photo here, hit camera. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pop up your photo, take a picture, whatever you want to take a picture of, hit use photo, and there you have it. That'll add that to your report, right? We've also got in here, if you want to look at your performance at any time, you, you can tap on that and get to your performance. So just quick access, and this button here will eventually be, again, uh, set up by the user. And the question mark is links right to our support page. So when you click on support, let's say you want to know about uh, pro placement, you just start typing in there, and that'll pull up the pro placement for accurate, measure, for accurate diagnostics, show you where to put your probes, indoors and outdoors so there's a lot of stuff on our information section here to help you to make good measurements this is really important for static pressure measurements so you're going to want to make sure you review that if you're new to measure quick hit the x key and that'll pull you right back to the home screen you've also you know could do like a save a test out so we got test in test out um, if you can and if we want to uh, let's say configure our report settings we can tap on that so we can set it up so we have a dart or darker light theme, include our profile picture, include our company logo, show range indicators, which are up and down arrows, uh, include cover pages for the report, our photo pages, circular profile photos. There's a lot of different things here you can adjust on your report to get it sort of tailored the way that you want to tailor it. And then we have our save tests, which will show us right now we've only done uh, one, which is our test in. If we, if we go ahead and we'll just uh, scroll down the bottom here, I'm going to go back to the gauges for a minute. And let's say I want to look at everything and, and scroll through and I can swipe left or right or I can hit the buttons here, but everything looks good the way I want it. And let's say that I want to now save a test out. So I hit save test out. It's going to save that again. I want to hit preview the report. Again, I'll go through my subsystem review 
again, because I didn't take electrical measurements, uh, that's not going to go there. And any changes I made, so, you know, maybe the condensate drain was a fail the first time, now it's a pass, but again, you'd want to interact with this again. And then we'd hit continue. And then you can see I got a save test and a test out. So now when I go to that save test, um, you'll see that I have a second date and time stamp there on there. So very, very quick and easy to use. The buttons now, the gauge buttons and the streaming top and bottom. Now let me show you this, the status streaming feature, also pretty awesome. So let's say I'm an installer, I get all done. I wanna go have somebody at the office, uh, like a inst installation supervisor review the data stream. So I just click on stream data and I hit start stream. Now I can just shoot him a text or her a text and what they do is when they go back to the, just literally log onto the home screen of MeasureQuick, so I'm gonna go back to the home screen, you'll see that on the test tractor, you've got Jim Bergman streaming data. So now all they have to do is click on, on the tech that's streaming data and it'll show them remotely what the tech is streaming uh, from the field. And there can be a stream list here, so you can have a list of technicians over here, four or five or six technicians streaming data at the same time, and you can actually flip between the technicians. If you click on the flag up here, you can see any diagnostics or any faults that were cleared out. Um, you have, you know, same access to all the data that your tech has, and all this data is streaming live. When you're done, you can just go back, and I can literally continue the active test I'm in and just hit continue, and it'll go right back into where I was working. So you don't lose anything. Um, it just makes it very, very quick and easy to use uh, as you're doing your testing. All these boxes are also collapsible. So if I want to just, you know, not really see what, where I'm dropping on score, but just minimize that, you can do that. Same thing with system status. So you can set up this workflow in the side of the screen, however you want to use it. Now, um, when you're done with a project here, one thing I do want to show you, when you exit, you always want to exit and exit and sync to cloud. That's gonna store that data in the cloud because we're still in a project. I hadn't really exited it yet. So now when it goes back to the home screen, you'll see that that project goes away. So this way you always know when you go to the home screen if you're in a project or if you've exited the project. So that's uh, some of the high level overview things on MeasureQuick. There's uh, you know, probably some more things you can we can go over later in another video, but just wanted to give you an idea of what was here and how to use it. If, again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, if you would, uh, you know, send them to info at measurequick.com. Just click on that link. That'll take you right to a, an email page. You can send us an email. I'll be glad to answer any questions for you. If you haven't gotten enrolled in MeasureQuick training, I'd highly suggest you get your company enrolled in training. We've got some really good training opportunities. Um, we do both in person, online, and we have a full LMS on there. So there's a lot of good opportunities to uh, get involved in some MeasureQuick training so you get the most out of the project. A product. So a lot of really cool stuff here. Um, hope you guys like it and thanks a lot for watching.